So yesterday I got this question and I was like, whoa, I should look into this. So today we're going to talk a little about AOA and medical schools and what that means for all of you. So let's get into it. All right. Welcome aboard. My name is Prerak. I'm a medical student. I love talking about productivity and all things med school. So with that, let's get started today on a topic that I think is very under discussed in uh, today's medical school curriculum, which is the aspect of AOA. So what exactly is AOA? If you are applying to medical school, this is very important for you to know. And if you're in medical school, I'm sure you probably do know that AOA is actually kind of like the prestigious honor society equivalent of medical school. It's almost like, I don't know if you guys remember National Honor Society from high school, or even in um, uh, undergrad, there was something called a pre-medical honor society. AOA is like the med school equivalent. At least that, that's the way I've kind of configured it in my head. And I actually took this uh, from a news article where it says, AOA is often determined by certain characteristics such as excellent physicianship, such as trustworthiness, uh, caringness, knowledge, scholarship, proficiency in doctor-patient relationship, compassion, blah, blah, blah. So there's a lot of cr like criteria, but the point is only 20% of the graduating class of students can be elected to AOA. So it's almost an, a very exclusive group, which is why I said it's almost like the, the honor society. And so now if you look at this slide here, it says medical students are eligible for AOA membership if they rank in the top quartile of their class and are selected by a committee at their institution. Society membership is important because members are more likely to get into residency program of their choice and more likely to attain a particular rank, you know, basically have a more um, successful career. Uh, and so that's the importance of AOA. The reason why it matters is because at this point, almost all medical schools are pass fail. So I don't know if any of you have been applying now. If you interview at medical schools, you will see that almost all medical schools in their first two years of preclinical education, when you're learning a lot of the physiology and the pathophysiology and the diseases, all of that in every medical school is pass fail. And the whole point of all of that being pass fail is to decrease competition preclinically, right? Because imagine having to compete with people when you're already so overwhelmed. That can be really, really tiring. So the whole point of making schools pass fail was to decrease this competition. However, some medical schools say that they're pass fail, but they may still have AOA, which is interesting, right? Because as we just learned, AOA is for the top certain percent of a graduating class. And therefore, if a med school is pass-fail and has AOA, that kind of defeats the purpose of it being pass-fail, right? Because if you're pass-fail, you're trying to decrease competition. But if you have AOA, that implies that you're still ranking students and therefore there's gonna be inherently some competition happening, right? There's gonna be some way that students are still being ranked if they're gauging who's gonna be an AOA and who is not. With all of that being said, is AOA a good thing or a bad thing? I think it can actually go either way, and I'm going to try to present both sides of the equation here. Uh, full disclosure, I go to Yale, and Yale does not have AOA. But again, I, I genuinely do want to make sure everyone just has information available for them to make their own decision. So the pros of AOA are that they actually motivate you to be the best damn person you can be, right? For a lot of us, we went into medicine because we actually thrive off of competition. We actually obviously got into med school, and therefore if we got into med school, we're, we're very good at you know, getting a rubric and being told, here's what you need to do and try to do this the best as possible. And then you do it the best as possible, right? So in that sense, I think AOA is very good. It can be very motivating. Um, and I think some people do well in competition. I mean, more often than not, people got into med school because they are very competitive and they tend to do well with competition. And oftentimes AOA is a way to set yourself apart from your class, right? Like for example, if you're in medical school right now, I guarantee you, you respect your whole class, right? All of them are very smart, very intelligent people. But at the same time, it's also really sad if there's no way to differentiate between you two, right? Because then what if I'm seen the same way as my classmate? And if that's the if that's the same for all 400 students in my med school, well, then that almost takes away my, my uh, distinct identity. And therefore, the pro of AOA is that it gives you a way to say, okay, my med school class is very talented, but guess what? I... I showed myself for this AOA uh, prestige, and therefore I kind of think I made myself different from all of them, right? It gives you a way to set yourself off from the pack, and I think that's a pro because a lot of people who have AOA may end up being able to be better ranked for residency programs. And I think program directors do care about this because 
If you look, this is actually from the 2020 report from the National Residency Matching Program, and it shows where is AOA, and you'll see that AOA is right here. So residency program directors, if you sum up all the program directors across multiple different specialties, there's 650 of them here, um, about 52% cited that AOA was important for them, and they gave it a ranking of 3.7 out of 5. By no means is that very important, but it, it clearly does show that some residency program directors do care about AOA, and it does serve as a great way to set yourself apart. And therefore, if your school has AOA and you leverage that, you're looking good, right? But at the same time, also notice here, there's a lot more that matters for getting into residency than just AOA, but I do want you to realize it is a valid factor. With that being said, let's now transition over to the negatives of AOA. I personally think the problem with AOA is that it can be deceptive because if a med school is pass-fail, some students may choose to go to that med school because they don't want to be stressed with competition. But if a med school is pass-fail and they have AOA, well, that kind of defeats the purpose, right? That's almost like saying, oh, we don't have letter grades, but we do rank you. <laughs> so at the same time, it's like, okay, you don't have letter grades, but some way you're still ranking all of us. Okay, well, that's, that's kind of counterintuitive, right? And personally for me, getting into medical school was hard enough, <laughs> right? And I personally did not want to compete with the 99 other medical students in my in my Yale Medical School class. I just don't think that would be particularly healthy for me uh, because I, I personally have had a lot of mental health issues and struggle with imposter syndrome and competition. So for me, I was thinking AOA would be bad because I think that it may end up making me feel a lot more like a gunner, which I didn't want to feel like, right? Uh, there are also lots of implicit biases in AOA. I think I've I've cited a bunch of papers here. You should definitely check this out. But there's a lot of studies that have shown that uh, membership into AOA uh, prefers certain aspects of, of race, certain aspect of gender, and therefore it's not always as objective as we think it is, and therefore that's one of the negatives. And as I told you, there's already enough competition in medicine. Step one is eight hours. Step two is nine hours. Step two CS is really long. So for me... The negative of AOA is that it's just adding another factor into this hoop that we have to continue to keep jump, jumping through as medical students, and it's not particularly conducive, right? Um, and here's this article I told you about, about implicit bias, where there are certain racial disparities, and therefore it's very important that we understand that that is a negative aspect of the society, especially in today's times, because as we know, it's impacting every facet of our lives, and it's important for us to be aware of it. At this point, you're probably wondering, so what schools have AOA and what schools do not? Is there a list? Well, <laughs> hopefully this is about as good as it gets. I tried to compile a list of all the schools that do have AOA and which ones do not. And the way I did this was by going onto the website for AOA and then looking through what schools have chapters of AOA and which schools do not. So as someone who goes to Yale, I knew that Yale did not have an AOA chapter as well as Harvard, Stanford, UCSD, UCSF, UC Riverside. And there's a bunch of schools on here that also do not have chapters. Some of the reasons why these schools may not have chapters is because one, they might be new. Two, they may just not have a chapter because they got rid of it. I know UCSF actually was very recent that got rid of their AOA chapter. However, you may also notice that some schools have AOA chapters, but don't actually admit students to AOA. So Mount Sinai, for example, is a school that has an active AOA chapter. So if you look on the AOA website, Mount Sinai has an AOA chapter, but it doesn't induct students into AOA and therefore students don't have to compete to be the top 20%. On the other hand, if this if a school is not listed here, that means that the school does likely have AOA, and therefore you should probably check with each of those schools that have AOA, because if they say that they have AOA, you want to make sure you know that before you make your decision to go to medical school. Primarily because one, some people may love AOA, right? So if you're one of those people, you should know if the school has it. Two, if a school says that they're pass fail and they have AOA, then believe it or not, that may still add a little bit more competition that you may like, that you may either like or not like, depending on the type of person you are. So make sure you ask. I'm going to link this PowerPoint in the description below, as well as timestamps for the whole video. And you can actually go to this website and check to see which schools have active AOA chapters. And you can even explicitly ask schools through their email and also when you visit them on interview day, if they have active AOA memberships. So with all that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, drop a like, Comment, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.